Misfits, welcome to the Misfit Heroes Podcast. My name is Chris, and together we are going on a journey. Now, Misfits, there's a crisis happening right now in our own country. It's not a war, it's not a pandemic, and it certainly isn't political. Millions of people are choosing between feeding their families and heating their homes in this country. It's not starving children in Africa. It's not even in another state. Heck, there could be a family struggling with food insecurity on your own street. And the current state of the economy isn't helping. While people online bicker about inflation rates and foreign aid, the cost of food has increased over the last 12 months by a factor of up to 125%. And that hits the working class the hardest. Remember during the pandemic when all those actors and actresses, they got together and they sang that fancy rendition of Imagine by the Beatles? Remember how much that impacted you personally during the pandemic? No? Well, contrary to that deeply moving song, with no disrespect to my girl Gal Gadot, there have been artists gathering together for nearly 20 years to end the food insecurity issue at its core. And Justin Levy has been there nearly the whole time. Justin is the executive director of Conscious Alliance, a nonprofit that organizes food donation drives at music festivals, and he's delivered over two and a half million meals to families across the nation. Concert goers, they simply bring a canned food item to the event that they're attending, and they walk away with a free limited edition poster specific to that concert. We discuss why we still have food insecurity issues in one of the most successful world nations, the collaboration created between Justin's organization and the musicians that he deals with, and how he's led the organization through dealing with personal health issues like cerebral palsy and dyslexia. All right, let's get this party started, Misfits. Please welcome Justin Levy. Playing the Misfit Heroes podcast. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm so good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for taking the time to do this. I know you're a busy guy. I know you've been going out through a lot. Um, So let's talk about Conscious Alliance a little bit. Before we get started with anything about you or what you're doing, what is Conscious Alliance and how did it start? Like, What what is your organization about? Totally. Um, Conscious Alliance is... More than a movement, it's an iconic community of bands, food brands, artists, and fans really on a mission to awaken compassion and create a massive positive impact towards ending hunger across the country. From what I've seen, you guys do like concert posters, but it's not just that. I mean, how exactly does the process work with Conscious Alliance? What do you guys do? Absolutely. So again, about awakening compassion, right? And creating an outlet for people to give back. Uh, We started 20 years ago with a really simple idea of engaging young people in the fight against hunger by hosting a food drive at a concert. And uh, we teamed up with the band, The String Cheese Incident at the Fillmore Auditorium in Denver. Um, We asked fans to bring food to the concert in exchange for a poster. And at that time, we printed it at Kinko's, um, brought (laughs) it to the show, called it Limited Edition. And um, our friend, Michael Everett, designed the poster for us. Um, We collected 4,000 pounds of food at that first food drive. and. 8,000 pounds of food at the next one. And, you know, we realized we had something going. Um, and from there, Conscious Alliance was born. These are like limited custom posters. These aren't, uh, these aren't like the same ones you can like buy at the show, right? This is like a custom work of art, right? To- totally. And, um, like I said, the first one was printed at Kinko's. Um, fast forward 20 years, we work with about a hundred musicians and festivals, um, to host art that feeds food drives all across the country. Um, We create limited edition screen prints. Folks wait in line for a few hours, pick up the print by donating food or making a monetary donation. And and from there, we've been able to create a massive positive impact towards ending hunger across the country. I'm a big concert goer myself. And my my big thing was, you know, everybody had to have like the t-shirt. It was either the poster or the t-shirt. You either had to decorate your room or you had to decorate your body. (laughs) Yeah. How did you personally, how did you get involved with Conscious Alliance? When did that start? Were you there from the beginning? It's pretty close to the beginning. Conscious Alliance was born in 2002 um, by two brothers who attended Colorado University in Boulder. Um, they hosted that first food drive with the string cheese incident and uh, 
packed up a U-Haul truck and went to Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. It's six hours away from our home here in Colorado. Um, they drove up the food and asked if anybody knew the Hand family, and they got pointed to an elder's home. And uh, the elder said, if you want to help our people, you'll help feed our people. And uh, Conscious Science was built right at a kitchen table on Pine Ridge Reservation um, in 2002. I grew up outside Chicago, and um, my high school guidance counselor asked me if I wanted to start a program for at-risk youth um, to go from Chicago area to Crow Creek Reservation in South Dakota. Um, because of my history with the guidance counselor, I absolutely said yes. Um, but I didn't know that I was one of the at-risk youth that he was talking about. <laughs> um, and so we went up to Crow Creek Reservation and, uh, it was a life-changing experience for me. I, I struggled in school. I struggled with, struggled with a lot when I was younger and it was profound, um, in, in so many ways, but, I graduated high school early, had spent time for uh, multiple years in a row going to Crow Creek, and um, I went to see the band The String Cheese Incident, walked up on two brothers that were collecting food for a Native American reservation a few hours away away from a place that had really changed my life. Um, so I joined the organization um, almost 19 years ago now in 2004. Are you of Native American descent yourself, or you know what was what was the uh, what was the pull there? Not at all. Um, I, for me, there was, um, a connection when I, when I went to Crow Creek, um, a lot of, I was 15 years old and a lot of the conversations I was having with, um, other high school students from the reservation was, you know, about all the same things, right? TV shows and, and school dances and sports. And something that caught me was, um, how frequent suicide came up and how it was almost normalized to the point where, you know, they had shortened the word to just committed. And it was um, at that moment where I, I kind of just realized that there was an opportunity for me to plug in to my strengths and that I could support kiddos and not just help, but just, just support and be there and be an advocate. Um, and part of it is from my own struggles as, as a kid. Um, I, before I was born, my brain bled and I was born with cerebral palsy and the doctor said, Hey, we have no idea what Justin's going to accomplish in his life. Which by them telling my parents that it was actually a really big gift because there was no expectation on me uh -huh. at that point. Um, I also was, am very dyslexic and didn't learn how to read till I was 21 years old. Wow. So I had a lot of cards stacked against me, but my guard, I got my guidance counselor took me under his wing when I was in middle school. Um, and we would just sit and talk about life as I got further and further behind in school because I was taken out for surgeries and um, to learn how to walk multiple different times. <laughs> like, oh gosh, yeah. you know, and it was just this, this time uh, getting to spend time with an individual. And, and so when I went to high school, he uh, also transferred to the high school, which was a, a big gift for me. I spent my younger years like developing a team for me, developing a team of doctors, developing a team of teachers and advocates. And um, a gift that my parents gave me was to uh, be involved in any big conversation that had to do with my life, whether it was surgery or, or otherwise. Um, and so, you know, with my guidance counselor taking me under his wing at such a young age, uh, when he asked me if I wanted to start this program with him, uh, at Crow Creek, it was a, it was a no brainer for me, you know? And while we were there, the only, the only subject I was ever really good at was photography. And so I brought my camera and I took a lot of pictures and we got back from one of those trips and 
counselor asked me to see all the photos that I took. And the rule back then was if you took photos, uh, you had to get somebody's address so you could send them a copy. There were no iPhones or digital photos at the time, right? So it was right. like, give them the, give the gift of, of the photo you took. Um, and we went through those photos and he let me know that one of the kids I spent time with at a powwow um, over the previous weekend or two weekends prior, the day we left, he committed suicide. He was 11 years old. Oh my God. Um, and for me, it was that, again, that moment of going, all right, I know how to develop a team. I, I've had a lot of support. This is actually an opportunity for me to kind of tap in and give back. And I didn't know what that meant at the time, but just the feeling. Um, graduated high school early, not because I was the smartest kid in the class, but because I needed to get the hell out of there. Yeah. And uh, like I said, went to a string cheese incident concert, flew out to Colorado, went to the concert, met two brothers outside the show collecting food uh, for a reservation, which was like a, a full circle for me. Um, I, I dove in and here we are almost 19 yeah, years later. Yeah, well, the rest is history, right? <laughs> uh, the rest is an uphill battle with uh, some amazing moments. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you know, that, that's 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 a journey <laughs> right there, you know? Before we get into, like, how you're helping others and everything like that, I mean, what has that struggle been like? You know, I, I, I saw that you had to relearn to walk like three or four times. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I went through multiple surgeries, uh, spinal surgery, leg surgery, all the all the things. Um, what has it been? It's been um, incredibly challenging. It's been heartbreaking. It's been um, the greatest gift that I could ever ask for. Right? It's like it's what made me me. It's uh, what what gave me. Uh, determination. It's what gave me grit and uh, compassion for other people. Um, it created an opportunity for me to understand, uh, although I have some weaknesses or maybe some disadvantages and some struggles, um, the opposite side of that coin is, like I said, I, I learned how to develop teams. I learned how to like pick the skills out of people and, and like, let them do what they're really good at and shine. And, um, I've, I've gotten to turn that into, you know, uh, transforming an organization with the, with the goal of feeding as many kids and families across the country and turning it into millions of meals a year. But it's, uh, it's the same struggle that allows the opportunity. Well, I mean, it really just amazes me what you've done. You know, being you're the executive director for Conscious Alliance. I mean, I, I'm in the process of starting a nonprofit myself, and the legalese and the reading and and making sure line by line everything is so 100 percent perfect and all the eyes are crossed and all the T's are dotted. I think I got that backwards, but um, <laughs> but gotcha. you know, like, I mean, that's that's got to be a lot. I mean. What is your day to day like? I mean, how how do you how do you manage the ongoings of a nonprofit with that? I think if we truly want to solve the world's problems and um, create a compassionate environment, it's about hiring the absolute best um, team we can. Right, yeah. and how do I do it from a day to day standpoint? Um, I have 95% of my emails read to me at 400 words per minute through software. Nice. Um, I have every contract uh, read to me with a robot voice that goes faster than most people could understand, but that's like, I'm, I'm able to pick it up because my auditory learning is yeah great. You know, um, how do I spend my day? I think that, um, it's about creating relationships and uh, truly building the conscious alliance, right? Like building the alliance, letting uh, anybody who wants to be involved, everybody's welcomed. Like this, what we're tackling today is uh, monumental and we could use all the uh, help, you know, everybody's heart and hands involved. So I spend most of my day uh, connecting with people and uh, engaging and being creative. Right. And then 
handing off a lot of it to the team to say, all right, well, that's super inspirational. You know, a lot of people, when, when you think of the nonprofit space as a whole, um, you know, people think of the, the cause or the action that's being done in this thing. So I think that's perfect, actually. I mean, I, I wish, honestly, I wish there were more people that were able to see it that way, you know, rather than, I mean, yes, you, you're doing, you're doing all of the reading of the contracts and all that stuff as well, but you're, you're actually doing what people want to do when they, do a nonprofit. They're getting a team of people together and they're just, you know, solving the causes that they're going after. I I think that's awesome. I love that. I think we all, um, look, I get stuck behind my desk sometimes and I forget what we're up to. Sometimes I'm like, you know, focused on a hundred emails a day and, and just getting bogged down. But I think it's important for all of us to always tap back in and, and remember why we're doing what we're doing, right? So for me, that might be going and visiting a school and uh, connecting with the kiddos, Mm -hmm. right? Or um, helping to unload a truck or whatever it may be. I mean, I think think there's a big awakening in nonprofit, for-profit, like people tapping back into, hey, I started a restaurant because I like to cook, (laughs) so I'm going to go back in the kitchen, Right. right? I. I created an ice cream shop because I like creating flavors and scooping ice cream for the community. And going back to that, right? Like, I think we always need the re-reminder, right? It's like the constant re-reminder of a lot of things that we've we've learned in life and we need to re-remember as we get older um, and it's harder to hold on to. I think in 2023, I think that's going to be a big, significant change. I think globally like that. Um, I was just having a conversation today with, with a fellow YouTuber that was sort of struggling with this mindset of growth. You know, everybody seems to be in this mindset of growth. How do I, how do I get bigger? How do I do the next big thing? And we tend to forget about the passion, why we started it. I, I like talk. I like doing podcasts because I like to talk to people. I'm having a great conversation with a guy. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. Talks, talks to a bunch of bands all day. I, I think that's awesome. You know? <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I totally, I totally get that. You know, you have to go back to the beginning a little bit. And I think after the last couple of years with the pandemic and all this angry elections and all this garbage, like, I think, I think that's going to be a big thing this year, a big focus shift. Um, you know, when people sort of realize, like, I think everybody's starting to refocus their lives a little bit, you know, we have to, and we have to constantly do it. And I, it, it takes so much work and so much energy. And sometimes, uh, you know, it's not every day is for recreating everything, but I think it's important to, uh, connect inwards and, and, and think through like, are we doing what we need to be doing? Are we, are we still on our path? And I always say like, if I give it a B plus, I'm still doing pretty good. You know, (laughs) they can't all be for the most part. I, (laughs) yeah, for the most part, if I like what I'm up to most days and if I look at a month, like there's some challenging moments, it's not all perfect, but like, does it still feed my soul? And if it does, then like I'm in the right spot to, continue to help feed others literally yeah yeah for sure it's a great outlook so you went to a concert for the string cheese incident and you saw two brothers out there with food donations and things like that so my question is this i mean how how did the organization sort of link up with the bands or the concert promoters initially like that seems like a strange thing to me did they just show up and start doing it or how was that relationship sort of created a little bit how does that work for you guys Absolutely. So uh, one of the brothers was a intern with Madison House, the management company for the string cheese incident. He had been doing food not bombs um, when he was in high school and he pitched them the idea of this food drive. And when it was a success, the band said, hey, we want this to happen at every show. Management was smart enough and, and forward thinking enough to say, let's not 
just make this thing that doesn't even have a name yet into just being our nonprofit. Let's introduce them to other folks around the industry. And uh, one by one, um, you know, we worked with the the String Cheese Incident. We went on tour with the band STS9. We got invited on a Phil Lesh tour from, from the Grateful Dead. And uh, from there, we just continued. And, and today, we're working with about, like I said, 100 musicians and festivals. Um, and our food drives have uh, taken off around the country. And that's how we met what I call um, hunger heroes, folks that are working in their communities day in and day out to alleviate hunger and, and provide that compassionate care. So as we grew, we've been able to tap into that network, the Conscious Alliance Network of Hunger Heroes to help get food across the country. In 2008, we met Justin Gold, who had just launched a really small peanut butter company here in Boulder called Justin's. And uh, they had three employees and they were trying to decide what nonprofit they were going to support. And they picked Conscious Alliance. Um, They have now grown to uh, being a a very big company. And um, hopefully you've had their peanut butter cups. If you haven't, try them out. I'm going to go find them. Um, But (laughs) But they took us with them 15 years ago or so. And uh, same time, Whole Foods chose us as a national charity to receive a million dollars worth of private label food when they bought Wild Oats Grocery Store. And from there, we had the network around the country. We started breaking into natural food. And we realized that there's a big um, food waste problem in the country where Grocery stores won't buy food if it's uh, close to Best Buy, but close to the Best Buy date is like 90 days of shelf life. And so we started taking all of our touring and logistics experience, routing semi-trucks and picking up food from now about 85 different brands, um, stopping their food from going into the landfill and moving it to our partners across the country uh, to affect hunger nationally. And uh, we've really, you know, become a uh, environmental hunger relief organization by doing so. Yeah. Now you said that you toured with the band STS nine is your like, is your organization touring with these bands or is it like at specific dates and shows and things like that? It fluxes, but we, um, we do full tours with bands. We just did a tour with the band Goose and, uh, Trey Anastasio from the band yeah. Fish. Um, his, his band, uh, Trey Anastasio band. Um, we did multiple nights, uh, with those bands and, and sometimes we do, um, kind of big weekends, right? Like two, three nights in Chicago, New York, LA, uh, Michigan, wherever, you know? Wherever the bands will have us, we'll we'll join. Well, I would assume that that you probably don't have too many shortages of volunteers. Then, if I'm noticing some of these bands, I mean, I know a lot of those jam bands. They those fans are like diehards. <laughs> like they're touring around the country with these people, anyways. Why not volunteer with you, right? <laughs> Absolutely, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of hours of volunteer time each year, and we have a very committed, dedicated staff who uh, create incredible opportunities for, um, like I said, the, the bands, the food brands, the artists and the fans to plug in and, and create change together. Um, it's a lot of spokes in the wheel and together we, we create conscious alliance and we create change. One of the things that I wanted to talk to you about a little bit is the logistics portion of what you do. Cause I mean, that's gotta be a huge endeavor to, Number one, not even just coordinate with these different bands and marketing companies and, and management companies and things like that. But also, you said your first event, you got like 4,600 pounds or something like that of food. As the executive director, how has that process sort of come together over time? I mean, you've essentially become a logistics company, it sounds like, right? Absolutely. We 100% have. How did it come together? Many years ago, we got offered the opportunity Um to move a semi truck of food for the first time. (laughs) And, um, we reached out to a board member who, uh, works in logistics and, um, he helped us move those first few. We, the first one we ever loaded or unloaded on Pine Ridge reservation, um, 
was in, I don't know, five degree weather or negative five degree weather without a uh, loading dock, without a, um, without the right equipment. And I would say we uh, climbed up on each pallet, uh, wrapped a chain around it, pulled it out with a (laughs) forklift, you know, like how did we do it? We did it with uh, drive and tenacity. Like we were talking about earlier, I learned and my team learned a lot more about uh, trucking and logistics than we ever uh, thought we would. Right. I, I know more about screen printing and my team knows more about screen printing than I ever thought (laughs) we would. Right. So I don't know, you get going back to like my life story, right. I said, every, every challenge is an opportunity and that's how I look at our business too. It's like, um, you get the opportunity, you accept the challenge and you learn and you grow from it. Right. And you ask for help and creativity along the way and, and let everybody be involved. Right. So when we're unloading some of these semi trucks, it's not just our team. It's those hunger heroes I was talking about. Like we might send a truck to Chicago and we have our friends out there unloading who are doing the work every day in Chicago. And like, um, it's not just about conscious Alliance. It's about their organization, what they're trying to do. And, and like, Hey, we've got food here today. Well, great. Let's do it. Let's do it together. Right. Like, it's the band's playing the music. The band wants to give back. We're creating the outlet for the band to give back. We're creating an opportunity for brands to reduce their food waste. We're giving an opportunity for fans and supporters to like engage with their hearts and and give yeah. back. So hopefully it's a win for everybody. That's like the key nonprofit mentality. You know what I mean? It's like you start out as an executive director and you start out with like, oh, I'm an ideas guy. I'm doing, I'm doing this stuff. And then you start processes. And then after a couple of years, you're like, I'm pulling stuff off of trucks with a forklift and chain. <laughs> like, how did that happen? You know? Yeah. And you almost start the opposite way. You almost start as like a volunteer or like something, something, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't start as an executive director. I didn't know about what I was doing. I like, yeah, I looked for guidance and asked for support and mentorship and, you know, and hopefully I'm in a better place in 10 years than I am today, like continuing to learn and grow. A lot of these festivals you've got, like, I'm a big fan of electronic music. I, I love electronic music festivals. I've got a kid. I haven't been to one in quite some time, but, um, but the the some of these festivals like particularly EDM festivals they've got like 100 200 acts that that they're dealing with the relationships that you create with these musical acts is it difficult to collaborate with these big ticket events like that or has everyone sort of somewhat been on board from the beginning for the most part let's call it a middle ground right we've been around for 20 years and and um like i said people don't leave the industry they just move around and so um electric forest has always been a big advocate of conscious alliance electric forest festival in michigan um founded by uh one of the string cheese incidents managers um many years ago and and that's where we had our largest food drive to date it's uh the EDM scene, the electronic music festival scene, and 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 fans bringing over thirty four thousand pounds of food oh to the food drive. That's insane! Like, <laughs> it's amazing. And so it's it's kind of you know how this all worked, right? We started with one band, we got our second band, we got our third, and it's it doesn't happen overnight. It continues to grow and grow and grow. Same with the food brands. We got our first, we got our second, we got our third, and it grows and. Um, Part of it's continuing to show up, right? Yeah. Like people hear Conscious Alliance enough. They're like, yeah, I've been hearing about this thing for a long time. It's like, well, we've been at it for a long time and we plan to be at it for a lot longer until the problem is solved. Yeah. You know, with that comes more opportunity for people to dive in. Yeah. Dig deep and 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 give. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to make it a little bit selfish a little bit, you know. Do you get free tickets to all the events and everything like that? Like, are you a big concert goer guy? <laughs> I think if I was willing to ask, I could go to more shows. I, I think it's really important. And, you know, um, we're all there for a purpose. My purpose to be there is to uh, engage fans through Conscious Alliance. I do go and enjoy from time to time. But, like, um, I'm there because I believe in the community and the work and adding to uh the vibe from an organization standpoint. Right. Yeah. So um, I feel really lucky to 
see the concerts that I've seen, um, but even more so make the connections that I've made with um, the touring staff and the bands who um, are my family and are my friends. And uh, it's, it's, it's a big family. I would be starstruck the entire time. Like (laughs) probably even just meeting, you know, the first concert as, as what you said, like a 15 or 16 year old kid, I would have been like, Oh, that's a string cheese incident right there. (laughs) Like, and I'm working with them. Absolutely. I would fanboy as a child. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe that's the gift of my dyslexia is like not always knowing who people are and just (laughs) meeting people where they're at and being like, Oh, cool. You made me laugh or like, I appreciated the conversation. I don't, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're all just humans. We're all doing our best and uh, we're all giving in a way that we can at the time. Right. That's pretty cool. It's it's a great outlook to have. I think it's it's just very impressive that you guys are building that community with direct contact with people. Not a lot of people have that. A lot of a lot of nonprofits are like, hey, donate, 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 but they don't have that real world in person interaction. And it looks like from what I see, um, you know, people are pleased to bring these things to you. I see, I see like with the electric, uh, the electric forest festival thing, for example, it looks like people were coming ready to give that stuff to you. They knew about it beforehand. They had that sort of going. Oh yeah. They traveled with it. Yeah. You know, they, they stopped at the grocery store, uh, right outside the festival to pick it up. And it's huge. I mean, I, I still am in awe every time I see a fan walking across like, uh, the field or across the stage with 40 cans of food or 20 (laughs) cans of food, right. Or, or walking up the stairs of Red Rocks amphitheater with 20 pounds of food in their backpack. Like, wow. Right. Like I'm still amazed and, and enamored by uh, the support that we get. The last couple of years, I mean, we, we have, we've had COVID, um, live events haven't really been huge. And also, um, you know, Concerts normally happen during the summertime. They don't generally happen during the winter time. So what is it like outside of concert season for you guys? Like, I mean, does it slow down and how do you guys continue to bring in that food? 15, 16 years ago, it slowed down. It doesn't, um, we're really lucky. It doesn't slow down, um, for us as much anymore. Um, they now call it, uh, they call October rocktober (laughs) and, uh, you know, we, we ended the year, with uh, 12 different concerts around the country. Uh, we ended 2022 that way. And um, our team just flew out today um, for a gig uh, to start 2023. So we've got the concerts going, um, you know, 2020, 2021, there were not as many uh, concerts happening. And um, we did a real big shift. We started uh, working with restaurants to offer um prepared meals from restaurants, keeping restaurants, um, open and employed. And, and, uh, we found ourselves uniquely positioned to help support gig workers. We had, um, weekly meal distributions to stage crews, sound crews, the security guards, like folks that are the real heartbeat of the music industry, the ones that make the music happen. Um, We were lucky enough to be the beneficiary of a lot of uh, live stream concerts that happened, you know, but we found ourselves in a position of supporting folks who helped us build our brand. And and that was really heartbreaking, amazing that we could be there. We were were honored to to be kind of the comfort zone for um, gig workers in that way, but it was really tough, you know. Yeah. Uh, watching friends, watching colleagues, watching families, uh, in addition to all the folks who we continue to support each day, it was a, it was an added, added demographic on top of it. And I'm proud of our team for what we did, you know, what we continue to do. Um, music is the, the driving force be- behind our fan base. And it's, uh, they provide the opportunity for us to pick up semi trucks of food from natural food companies literally every day. So um, it's this really great symbiotic relationship between the natural food world and uh, the music industry. It was really pretty crazy seeing that because that's like an entire industry that just ground down to a halt. 
like immediately. Mm -hmm. I was surprised to see all of the entertainers that sort of came together and basically said, no, we're not going to sit in our houses. I mean, you talked about the, uh, you know, the, the online streaming of concerts and stuff like that. But I mean, um, the people on the, on the sidelines, like even if you go to your, your, any, any venue or anything like that, the people that are serving food and beverages, promoters, all that stuff, it all, it, it just shut down an entire logistic chain. Yeah. <laughs> security guards the uh runner vans right yeah. like yeah like you said the vendors the sound the light the stage company it's, yeah all in a day do you guys get a lot of volunteers and if so how can people get involved with conscious alliance great question so uh, a great way to do a deep dive and and take action immediately is to go to our website consciousalliance.org backslash take action. Um, there we have a list of actions you can take within the next 10 minutes here. Um, and I urge you listening to go to consciousalliance.org backslash take action. If you participate in three of those actions, um, while on your phone, while on your tablet or at your desk, uh, you get entered to win two tickets to any one uh, Red Rock concert in 2023. Oh. So um, by learning more about Conscious Alliance, by taking action towards uh, ending hunger today, um, you may wind up in Colorado for an amazing concert. Sweet. Well, we'll make sure to put all that information down in the show notes below. Um, go check them out. You could get a free concert ticket too. You mentioned that you've created all of these relationships with bands and artists and everything like that. Who's been your favorite musical act to work with? Or do you not want to oh, say? Oh man. Um, I, I don't know that I can actually <laughs> um, pick one. There have been so many concerts and memories along the way. It's not even about not wanting to say, I just like, I'm, I'm flooded with, um, all of these memories, but really I'm flooded with that sentiment of like, wow, when people are willing to donate their talents to uh, make a difference in the world. Cause I don't, I don't think anyone's obligated to, and I think it's amazing um, that multiple industries and multiple generations of people are coming together um, to make sure that no kid goes hungry. Right. That's the ultimate goal. Yeah. And, um, I don't know. I think I could like pick one and then next week, like another show will happen and I'll change my mind. But, you know, um, some of those early days of, of, uh, going on the road with the string cheese incident, um, during hurricane Katrina and going on the road with STS nine through the Southeast and, um, my, my passion for music and my, my passion for the work, uh, really still propels me today. Yeah. So you're a big jam band guy, huh? I am. Yeah. We're, we're nestled right here in Colorado and it's uh <laughs> no stranger. I'm like, sure. No stranger. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we talked a little bit earlier, you know, these are like semi, semi truck pulls. I think you said you've delivered over like 2.6 million meals. What's been the biggest haul at one of these events? Like, have you, have you ever had to have yeah. like two semi trucks? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's amazing uh, right now that like, you know, what started with um, collecting our first barrel full of food or our first two barrels full of food has now turned into um, over 2 million meals delivered annually, right? You know, we went from boxes and barrels and stuff to, like I said, semi trucks moving daily, um, brands donating daily, bands donating daily. And um, I mean, Electric Forest was our biggest ever with 34,000 pounds of food collected. Um, that's um, a, a full semi truck, a full 53 foot trailer full of food wow. at the end of the weekend. Um, but, you know, now we're working with uh, gig workers, music industry to produce uh live events where we have 1500 cars drive through to get a Thanksgiving meal, Wow! you know, all in three hours. So again, leveraging people's talents, bringing semi trucks of food in and uh, giving it away pretty quickly. Well, that's amazing. You know, one, one of the other things that I wanted to talk to you about is the need for your organization as a whole, you know, um, 
why do you think that there are so many food insecurity issues if we are the world's most prominent country for the most part? We're, we're one of the most prominent first world nations. I mean, why do you think is the cause of many of these food insecurity issues as someone that in the industry? There's a lot to unpack there. And um, I believe that there is enough food in the United States to feed everyone. And it's a distribution or redistribution issue. I think that um, cost of living is going up. Cost of groceries are going up. And, uh, you know, what, what we've been seeing is that not the number one group that needs food assistance, but one of the largest growing numbers of folks that need food assistance are a family of four with two parents working 40 hours a week with two kids. And so just doesn't yeah. go as far as it, it used to. And um, it's putting folks in a really hard spot to decide uh, whether to heat their homes, feed their kids. We're recording this in January of, of 2023. And I mean, just two months ago, a carton of eggs has increased in price. I want to say like 75%. <laughs> it's, it, it's it's crazy. And then you have, you know, food shortages and things like that. It just doesn't seem like we should be having this issue with as well off as we are compared to the rest of the world. I think one thing the pandemic showed us and us as conscious science, but really like people across the country is that um, hunger is closer to home than maybe we thought. Um, hunger affects uh, kiddos and families in every single community across the country, from cities to rural areas to everywhere. Yeah, yeah, uh, down the street from us, right? Like it's it's not this far off problem, but our neighbors, our our friends, our kids' friends, uh, folks we work with, folks we go to school with, whatever whatever our situation is, it's a uh, the pandemic really showed that hunger affects folks everywhere. Well, you've been with this organization for a long time and you know, you've seen it grow a lot in your time there, I'm sure. So if you had one piece of advice for somebody that wanted to tackle like a big need like this, I mean, food insecurity is a huge need. So if somebody had a big need like that, that they saw that they could help somebody with. What do you think one piece of advice for that person would be? For me, it's really simple. Um, first, never put a ceiling on what's possible. The second is no action is too small. So take action, do something, start somewhere. That's it. Take the first step. The first step is the hardest one, right? <laughs> Followed by many more after that, but take them. Yeah. Right? Like, Yeah, for sure. Well, I know you mentioned before the, the website, you know, how can people find out more? Can you give me that website again? And if you had one key takeaway from this episode, what do you think that would be? What do you want people to know? First, uh, go to consciousalliance.org backslash take action. Um, second, like I just, like I just said, like, no action is too small. Um, I think we could all use uh, more compassion towards ourselves, towards our neighbors, and uh, we all have something to give. Um, we all have struggles and we all have talents, and uh, let's use all of that for good. We're winding down towards the end of the episode. At the end of every single show, I ask all my guests the same question. And don't worry, you're going to be a deer in the headlights because I didn't prepare you for it at all. But it's this, and it's a big one, so there's always like a pause. Don't worry. What was the last goal that you completed, and what's the next goal that you want to set for yourself? The last goal I completed for myself was today when I said I want to move my body. Um, and I got on the treadmill, and I... I move my body. Like I think it's really important every day um, to move. And uh, 
my goal, my next goal was that that was the second part of that. Mm -hmm. My next goal is to, uh, move the completion of my first goal into tomorrow and, and do the same thing. (laughs) All right. Truly sweet. So are you a big workout guy? No, I'm not. And I, I do it regularly, but no, I'm not. I just, I find it critically important. Um, for me having cerebral palsy, like I have to move my body. It's part of my maintenance. It's part of managing stress for me. I'm, I'm amazing at it because I do it, but the reality is I'm not great at it. Right. Like we just have to do it. Um, and it's something that I fall out of practice on frequently and I can feel it in my body. I can feel it in my mind. I can feel it in my heart. Like, uh, and I, it takes constant practice and it's just something to point to, to say, Hey, repetition helps. And, uh, taking that knowledge and moving it forward into other aspects of life, I think is important. And we could all, all use like support and managing stress. And, um, we've only got one body, so let's be good to it if we can. For sure. Well, trust me, it happens to the best of us. Your boy's been trying to work out for about a month. There was no new year, new you for me. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> me neither. I was like, uh, new year, you're stuck with me. I'm, I'm the same. You know, I'm gonna focus on new week, new me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get yeah. to that point first, and then you know, we'll be I, solid. Honestly, I'd go, week. I'd go new day. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we just need to restart. Awesome, man. Well, Justin, this has been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed talking to you. You know, Conscious Alliance, I think your organization is just phenomenal. I really like what you guys are doing. And I'm really impressed with your perseverance and your personal sort of um, interaction with with the organization. I think it's I think it's very inspirational going through what you've gone through and then basically helping grow this organization in the way that you have. I think it's just a, a beautiful thing. So I, I look forward to seeing what's coming for you in the future, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for giving us the platform to share about Conscious Alliance and uh, elevating our voice. I really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this guy up. Misfits, like I said, all of the show notes are down below. They've got links to all their stuff for Conscious Alliance. You can check them out on pretty much any platform you want to. And thanks again for listening. Have a great afternoon. Well, Misfits, we did it. That's our episode. As always, I want to thank you so much for listening, and thanks again to our sponsors. If you want to support any of the sponsors of this podcast, there are affiliate links on the Sponsors tab of our website over at www.misfit-heroes.com. You can also find links to all of our social media there, so be sure to follow us for immediate up-to-date info about the podcast. Please, if you enjoy this podcast and you want to help me out, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button down below so you're notified of new episodes as they're released, And make sure to leave a rating or review of the show on Apple Podcasts and YouTube. Truly Misfits, I love you. Thank you so much for listening. And until the next episode, be kind, love one another, and be a hero.